Kara Zorel escapes the dying planet of Krypton. She is delayed on her way to Earth. When she gets here 24 years later, she becomes Earth's newest hero, Supergirl. Welcome to the Krypton Report, a Supergirl podcast brought to you by Southgate Media. I am your host, Tyler Patrick, and you can find me at JTY Patrick on Twitter. So let's get started on what's going on today in the world of the Kryptonians. Welcome back, Kryptonians, to the next episode of The Last Daughter of Krypton, the podcast celebrating Kara Zorrell on the upcoming TV series Supergirl on CBS. I am your host, well, one of your hosts, Tyler Patrick, Mr. At JTY Patrick on Twitter, and once again this week I'll be flying solo. Kind of sad, but people get busy, and I want to bring you the greatest and best, quickest news. We interrupt this program to bring you this special news bulletin. So let's talk about the news right now. From what I've learned here is that Supergirl will be wearing a costume and that her neighbor will be Winslow Shot, which is a version of Toy Man. And I guess he's going to have a crush on her and he's going to know her secret identity. I guess they're working on casting Mr. Shot right now. And there's been some clips revealed of just the information. So that's an interesting uh, turn of events. We have more characters that we know, and Shot has not been used on either Flash or Arrow, so it'll be a good new character experience. Now, we also know that they were working on casting Kara's sister. She hasn't been cast yet, and we know that they're casting for Hank Henshaw. When we talk about him in another episode, who he is and the significance of that character and what that could lead to on the series. Now, there has been... Uh, some videos that have been linked and you can search for of actors and actresses auditioning for parts. And I guess there's a mysterious villain that they're referred to as the General. Now, take this with a grain of salt. Some people speculate that it'll be General Zod. I'm wondering if maybe it's a reference to General Eiling. We've already seen the General uh, mentioned and used on Flash. So, I don't know. Could be just something they put in here for these auditions. We don't know. We know that She'll be going up against the Lumberjack, which is a horrible name, but we've seen worse or happily in the pilot. Um, and I guess they're going to reference her cousin, who all know is Superman, which is odd because if they are going to make mention of her cousin and they are going to reference Superman, that kills my theory about this Supergirl kind of being an amalgam Supergirl of having more of the backstory of Superman. But I think it would be kind of odd if they're going to reference her cousin and there's been no other reference to this alien. Because we know this is supposed to tie to the Flash Arrowverse. Um, so, I don't know. The quote here in the leaked or released um, script from the casting session says, quote from Lumberjack, you bear his Superman, in parenthesis, symbol, but you are not him, end quote. So let's, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What, you know, what do you guys feel is the right way to go with Supergirl in the series. What we're learning is that they have cast Kara's mom with Laura Ben... Yeah, I can't say that last name. I'm horrible with names. But she will be playing uh, a Laura zor So we know that Kara is Kara zor the father of Laura and zor So that gives us some sort of insight into who her background lineage is now. This is pretty cool because the actress has been on Nurse Jackie, Law and Order, Nashville, uh, Law and Order, SVU, Royal Pains, and Go On. So we have that. And it makes me wonder what the description they give us that her guidance will echo across space and time for Kara. So I wonder if she'll be done the way that they do Jor-El in other incarnations of a Superman. So that's, that's some pretty cool breaking news. Retcon. Also... To clarify, when we were talking last time, Kara from the animated Bruce Town, uh, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League Unlimited Series, is actually Kara in Z. And the reason being is because at the time, Kara Zorel no longer existed, and DC didn't want to do anything with that character. So Kara in Z is from the sister world of Argos, like we talked before. Uh, usually they have Kara from Argo City. So now this is from Argo, it's a planet, 
and she has come to Earth and becomes Supergirl. Now, we will be reviewing those episodes from the animated series, season two, called Little Lost, Little Girl Lost, excuse me, as soon as we get there on the schedule. But that's just some clarification of who that character is. Um, you know, when you see her in the animated series, her, her costume is actually of the Linda Danvers Supergirl, which we will touch on later on. We do, uh, what's called Matrix, which is coming up. But I wanted to just flush out the fact that this Kara is a different Kara. So there you have it. And, uh, all right, moving forward, the rest of the show. Villain predictions. Now, something new we're going to start on the show each week is we're going to talk about one villain that we would like to see face off against Supergirl. And this week, my suggestion for a villain for Supergirl TV series is Parasite. I think Parasite can be a really unique villain. Uh, it hasn't been done yet. Flash, Arrow, and they can bring it in however they choose to. Um, but it could be a really good villain, being that it can give her that chance of feeling without her powers, without having to use kryptonite. Uh, someone that could be strong, could be anything, could be, you know, adapting other people's voices, adapting their skills. So it's definitely my choice. So here we go. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about Power Girl. But today, I got with me my man, Mr. Mike Kedrick. How you doing, Mike? Hey, not too bad. What's going on? Uh, not much, man. Welcome. Thank you for being on The Last Daughter of Krypton. And usually, uh, what we do now, starting out with each guest, what we're going to do is get their thoughts, their feedback. What's your, what's your initial thoughts about the Supergirl TV series? Uh, they're mixed because really, I, I don't know, like, like DC seems like they've got the, the whole, you know, TV show deal going on pretty well, but I don't know, uh, let's hope they can keep this rolling. What do you think about, like, you know, my theories coming abound about, can we have a Supergirl show without a Superman, or do we need to have some sort of Superman in the show? It, you know, it all started with Superman, I, I feel like, you know, in the comics without Superman, we would not have Supergirl, obviously, so I, I feel like they need to keep that in there, even if it's just, you know, some hints here and there. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, have you been paying attention to the casting? Not entirely. I, I mean, I, I know when they casted Supergirl herself, but the rest of them I'm in the dark with. Yeah, I haven't seen her in anything, and uh, I actually went and rented that movie Whiplash that she's in. I'll be checking that out and bring kind of a... I would like to check out some work by the actors if I can, so I kind of get a feel from her skill. I've said so before. I've never watched Glee, and I don't intend to, even though I love what Grant Dustin's doing on The Flash. I just I don't want to watch Glee. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't. Um, but anyway, all right, so what do you think, on a Supergirl TV series, what, what DC villain would you like to see show up? You mean, uh, are there any left after Flash and Arrow? <laughs> you know, I always look at it because they reference them being a connective universe. They've mentioned the Lumberjack is going to be the, the villain in the pilot. Um, you know, so we're just kind of brainstorming. I mentioned earlier in the in part of the cast that I'd like to see Parasite as a villain here on. That would be cool. That would definitely be cool. You know, I'm thinking back what villains are, you know, are Supermans, what are Supergirls, and which ones I think they could incorporate into the series, I think they could do an origin of Parasite, but he could also just be a, a meta-human that, from the, the spill out at the Star Lab. But I just, I don't want Star Lab to spill out to be the only source of villains and meta-humans. I don't want to end up being like in Smallville where every villain was powered by Meteor Rock. <laughs> but they all got their power with like, whatever you were doing at the time of the shower, if you were trapped around Kryptonite and you were swimming, you became Water Man. <laughs> right, you know? right. Or... You know, so I don't, I don't want that kind of pitfall for the show. Yeah, because you don't necessarily want that same footprint that, that the Flash has laid out, that all these people have these special abilities because of this one singularity. But, you know, I, I think they'll be able to come up with something on their own that'll, you know, be unique. And, um, and if not, then, you know, good luck to it for, for, you know, staying around for a season. I think that's all these people get meta-human abilities, but it somehow buries the only one that wants to do something good with it. Everyone else is like... Oh, I'm gonna rob people. I'm a criminal. If I get power. They're all the bad people. I mean, that's Firestorm excluded. Yeah. That's a whole other debate, a whole other show. <laughs> but all right, well, let's get into today's topic. Last week we talked about who is Kara Zor-El, and this time we're gonna talk about Power Girl. Well, Power Girl's kind of tricky. Power Girl's real name is Kara Zor-El, it's just the letter L, not the E L that we know that we've come to see. And the reason for that is she's from Earth Two. Now, we know that DC is big on the multiverse, and there's different Earths, different planets. So, 
She first appeared in All Star Comics number 58 in January, February of 1976. I don't know about you, but that was before I was born. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she is the cousin of Superman. She's just from, like we said, Earth 2. Now, Earth 2 has predominantly been the Golden Age characters with uh, Alan Scott Flash, or, oops, Alan Scott Green Lantern, Jay Garrick Flash, uh, Wildcat. Was, uh, what are some of the other characters that appeared on the JSA, the Justice Society? Um, anyways, those were the characters that were that we get. Now, the Earth 2 has always been envisioned as the home of the 1940s comic books. So, like, kind of the world where everything started. Now, Power Girl, uh, as of right now, the thing with Power Girl is, I think this is kind of cool. Like, I read Earth 2. The Power Girl in the new universe is basically, she was Supergirl, on her Earth, but when a portal opened when Dark Side attacked Earth 2 and it sucked her and Robin, who was Helena Wayne, into it and dropped them on Prime Earth, Earth Zero, the New 52 Earth. So when they got here, they had to take on new identities, and that's how we got Huntress for the New 52, and we got Power Girl. Now, what I find interesting is although Kara and Kara, that's a page, <laughs> and, but what's neat is on Earth 2, she adopted the name Karen Star. So we have Kara and Karen. They're basically the same kind of person, but Karen acts more mature and it seems a little bit more intuitive of things and is more acquainted with her own, with uh, just her environment, even closer with her cousin than Kara is. And I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. She's more older and mature. What are your thoughts, Mike, on Power Girl so far? I, I, honestly, I'm not entirely familiar with her, but just in, in browsing here over her uh, her history, I'm quite amazed uh, how much uh, there is here to work with. I mean, just in some of the notable aliases here, there's one that's uh, Kara of Atlantis. Nice. I mean, that, that's something I was never even aware of. I, did not, and, I missed that one. <laughs> and so that in itself, I, I think, would, you know, would bring about a, a bounty of, of uh, stories. Uh, it's interesting how much of a popular character she, she is. And now, one thing is, now, there's a difference in the costumes between Power Girl and Supergirl. Supergirl, of course, has the traditional costume we're familiar with that mimics Superman. Power Girl's is a white suit with blue boots. And you can't talk about Power Girl without mentioning the fact that she has usually an open area in her chest because they were originally supposed to. There's a some line in the comic, I can't remember which one, that she hadn't found her symbol to put there so that she left it open. Um, but usually it's very distinctive and there's cleavage cut out. Now, one of the funny things with Power Girl is, the original artist, when he started drawing her for fun, thought he would mess with the DC editors, and in each issue, kept making her chest size larger and larger, <laughs> until about four issues into the run, they actually noticed, wait a minute, something's wrong here. So she has a, a known kind of underlying tone of, of being known for that distinctively. It's kind of sad that that's, that was an awesome, strong character gets remembered. And yeah. I, I honestly, if you know, if, if that that does make it to TV, you know, I mean, they're going to take artistic liberties to maybe expound on that. But I don't think it's going to be that ridiculous. I don't either. Like, I see because Power Girl's become such a popular character, and we have Kara. I just because they're kind of the same character. That's why we're kind of talking about her. It's just the idea because with the show, I see them being able to do an amalgam of. Supergirl, Power Girl kind of character, maybe pull from different things, uh, mess with the universe and everything. One of the cooler things is uh, Power Girl didn't want to be have a derivative of Superman. She wanted to be her own hero, and that's why she chose the name Power Girl, which is fine, you know, because she's supposed to be a teenager, but I feel like the way they do Supergirl and Power Girl, sometimes they come off more as just young adults, and I think it's weird that they negate themselves down to girl, so like a woman character. Right. But maybe that's just me. Um, if you're interested in Power Girl and you're reading anything in the New 52, check out Supergirl 19. It's a really fun, interesting, interesting issue where Power Girl meets Kara. So Supergirl and Power Girl are together and fun unfolds. We'll just say that. <laughs> uh, good time. Now, <laughs> we we'll, would mention Power Girl has appeared in other media, but not really anything substantial. Um, in Justice League Unlimited, there's a character that's a clone from Supergirl called Galatea. And Galatea, the way they draw her with the white outfit, is like a reminiscent of a Power Girl. She's made from Dr. Emil Hamilton, which is, you know, if you follow the, the animated series of either Justice League or Superman, it's kind of sad because 
you know, you have Dr. Hamilton as such a friend of Superman, and then when Superman gets taken over and used by Darkseid, they don't trust him anymore. So when Superman trusts Dr. Hamilton to help Supergirl, he takes a sample of her blood and clones her to make her a weapon for the government. So, There's also something else here. Um, um, I just notice here. It says that Power Girl's abilities have fluctuated since 1986. So this could be something that is, is you know, touched on as well. It, it Maybe, you know, being in this new environment, um, the instability of exposure. Well, does it say what kind of power she fluctuated? It doesn't. Uh, I mean, it. everything that was listed were, were the same abilities that, that Superman had, you know, the, the x-ray vision, the heat vision, the, the freeze breath, all those things. Oh, freeze breath. <laughs> Actually, I want heat vision and flight. <laughs> I burn the cats running around here. <laughs> then freeze it with my breath. Just put it in shock. That would be hilarious. But if I melt the, melt the ice with my heat vision, or if I did like going to work, just fly past my work and be like, <laughs> and then freeze the ice like, wow, somehow there's an ice storm just right here. I don't know how it happened. Uh, I don't know. But if anyone really wants to see Power Girl, check out the film, the animated film Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. Power Girl is in that. It's actually Power Girl. It's a great film. Any of the direct DC films are awesome. What's cool is Power Girl is voiced by Allison Mack, who people would know as Chloe from Smallville. So it's a really great way of seeing her. She ends up being recruited by Luthor to stop Superman. So they think he's a murderer. So him and Batman are on the run from the government. It's, it's, it's great. Um, and there's no mention of Kara in the film. So that storyline comes up later in the film we're reviewing when we do the sequel, the pseudo sequel, which is Batman Superman Apocalypse. So that's a good one to check out. But so that's my power girl in a nutshell. And like I said, we're not touching on everything too deep because we're learning who Kara is and we'll get into some more examples of Kara. But we're gonna kinda just see where the show takes us and what kind of, what we can expect from the show. Um, I'm pretty excited. I love my Kryptonians. I love Superman. I just thought Supergirl was a great character and we need like I don't know how many people out there have seen the the, the little girl that wrote an article to DC Comics that they needed more female superheroes. So I get, I totally, totally get behind. We need a Power Girl show. We, or not Power Girl, Super Girl show. We need to get a role model out there for, for girls. I mean, you know, on Arrow we've had Huntress, which I would not say is a role model for girls. Uh, Black Canary, or just The Canary, either one, not really, like, a role model for girls. Heck, even Arrow's not a role model. <laughs> but, but Flash is. So we need it. We need a Supergirl show for all the little girls to tune in and be like, "I want to be like her." Get some, get some good vibes going. But even even uh, into that whole thing, I mean, with every hero, there, there's a, a flip side to how they have to live and deal with their own life. Like you, you see Barry, how he's a forensic scientist, you know, scientist there for the police. He has to deal with that, the, the real life, everyday situations. So I would hope that they would, you know, not just explore or just focus in on the the, the superheroine side of the story, but you know, when they do come around to doing this, that they'll they'll jump in. You know, how's she dealing with everyday life? Because these are things that that you know that girls and, and women are dealing with every day. So so why not make those you know. Show them how someone that's going to deal with this, this dual identity. I, I completely agree. I mean, we got a touch of that on Smallville. I feel like but they never really flushed out the Kara character. She went in for a season. You know, we saw what Clark had to go through with keeping his powers. And with these new shows, the way they're a little bit more secretive. And plus, I mean, you know, Oliver's an adult, Barry's an adult. But what happens when you have someone who's supposed to be a little bit younger, you know, and they haven't always really said, but maybe she's in high school, maybe not. Maybe she's in college. We'll find out. But how she's dealing with being an alien... And um, I'm really, like, I'm really excited for the show. I love the comic book series when they're done correctly, and so far there's a good track record. We'll see what happens. We're bringing up the CBS of Super Metal. Just remember, I'm here today with Mr. Mike. Mike, you want to drop where they can find you on Twitter, online? Um, I'll say I, I have been on Twitter. I just want to remember what my handle is. It's been a while. Well, if I, I'll uh, <laughs> look to the page. I'll drop a line and I'll tweet out to Mike. And if anyone wants to talk more with Mike or myself. Uh, you can find us online, and just remember, Supergirl is coming. Now she returns, she arrives. Catch you next time. Thank you for listening to the Krypton Report, the Supergirl podcast. Hit us up on Twitter, at Krypton Report. Leave us a review on iTunes and let you know what you think, how the show can be better, your thoughts on Supergirl, and anything else you feel like chatting about. And I'll catch you next week. <laughs>